Okay, what I would do first, if you have an equation, you can actually get rid of the denominator and you can make them all equal. And I don't want you to confuse that because some of the other questions, if they don't have an equation, you don't want to cross out the denominator. So I want to cross out the denominator here because I have an equation, so I can. Now, all I did, I just crossed out what was under the 8 here because I could factor that. That was a little difference of squares. So multiply to get negative 16, add to get 0, 4, and negative 4. What's nice about that, if you look over to the rest of the equation, you already have kind of part of the denominator to make a match. So this has an x plus 4. So this one would need an x minus 4. The one in the middle has an x minus 4, so would need an x plus 4 to make it match. Now, all you have to do, all my denominators, they don't have to be, they're multiplied, so it doesn't matter if I do, you know, five times three or three times five, it doesn't matter the order they're written. So if all the denominators match, you can just focus on the numerator to solve your equation. Now, on the top, that first one, it would just be one times x minus four plus one times x plus four. And then on the other side, we didn't have to do anything because that already had that common denominator, so it just stays eight. Now, if you distribute 1 here, <clears throat> all this is going to do, this is going to be x minus 4. And if I distribute 1 here, it's going to be plus x plus 4. How many x's do I have on that left side? 2. Okay, they don't cancel each other out. The 4's cancel each other out. Negative 4 and 4 adds up to 0. But I do get 2x equals 8. Now, just divide by 2 real quick and we're done. This is x is 4. But make sure if you have a rational equation, there is possibility you have an extraneous solution. So look at the original problem. You can't use any answer that would make your denominator zero. So if you look at the original problem, what values could x not be? Positive 4 and negative 4. And then if you guys look at the answer we got, that was one of the numbers I just wrote down as we can't have it. So in this particular case, this would have no solution here. So make sure you check for these because it's possible your answer could make a denominator zero and then it doesn't work. The second beautiful question here is one of these complex fractions that look really intimidating, but it's not, it's not terrible to do. Just treat this like two totally separate problems. So I'm just gonna look at the numerator. To add or subtract fractions, you do need a common denominator. What, I'm just going to, here, I'm just going to cover up the bottom of this real quick. What would you use a, as a common denominator between 3x and 4x? 12. 12. Okay, so top and bottom here, I'm going to go by 3. Top and bottom here, I'm going to go by 4. Make sure you multiply. I had somebody doing one of these with me this morning. They accidentally added. So you get 18 over 12x minus 8 over 12x. And then once you have that common denominator, just go ahead and subtract. You have 10 over 12x. You can simplify that if you want to, but you don't have to. It's up to you. You can do it now or you could do it at the end of the problem, whatever is easier for you. <coughs> okay, now I'm just going to repeat that process, but I'm just going to work on the fractions on the bottom of that. So I have 3 over 7x and 2 over 21x. What could you use as a common denominator here? 7 goes into 21, so I would just do top and bottom here by 3, and you don't have to manipulate the other fraction at all. So the first one would become, don't forget to multiply, 9 over 21x, and I'm just going to keep the other one the same because 7 goes into 21, um, so this is just going to stay 2 over 21x, and then you actually add on this part, so 9 and 2 is 11 on the top, 21x on the bottom. Once you're here, we're just going to do a keep change flip, and I'm dividing the top by the bottom, so the top is what stays the same, the 10 over 12x. Change that division to multiplication, and I'm going to flip the second one over. And then when we're multiplying, you don't need a common denominator. We're just going to go straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So I'm going to do 10 times 21, which is 210. I'm going to do 12 times 11 which is 132, and you guys, can, you could cancel it 
in that previous step, or you can write it both the top and the bottom would have an X. There's no adding or subtracting here, so the X's would just go away. And I just want to reduce that fraction. So I'm going to do 210 divided by 132, math enter enter to reduce my fraction for me. So this would be 35 over 22. Okay, tell me, there's one restriction here. What can X not be in this problem? Zero, and that's it. You don't ever have any um, factors like X plus three or anything like that. It's just a plain X multiplied by a number in every situation in the denominator. <clears throat> so zero is your only restriction. All right, so this just says simplify the rational expression, state any restrictions on the variable. Can you tell me on the top of this, two numbers, if you multiply them, you would get negative 14, Adam, you get negative 5. Negative 7, positive 2. Okay, what can I do with that once it's in factored form? Can I simplify anything? For sure. Okay, you have a product on the top when you create those parentheses, right? So if you're multiplying two things, if one of them matches, you totally can cross out the bottom there because it matches up with that. It has to be exactly the same. So all that would be left would be x minus 7. There wouldn't be a denominator anymore. So do I have any restrictions? Negative 2. Even though we crossed it out, you still have to list that negative 2 as a restriction because that would make the denominator 0 in the original problem. <coughs> okay, now. There is a question like this on the test, and I don't want you to miss it because it's not hard. Okay, I'm going to divide these two. Before I do anything to actually divide this, we're not going to actually divide it. Um, tell me any restrictions that I have just right now looking at that problem. What? Three and two. Okay, anytime your denominator would be zero. Now, if we were to actually go about doing this, which we're not going to, I would do my keep change flip. Do I have any new restrictions when I flip that second fraction over? Anything that x can't be now? Negative 9. And that's literally all you have to do. And you only have to do the denominator of the original problem, like just the x minus 3, so 3. The second fraction, whatever you divide by, both the x minus 2 and then the x plus 9 end up in the denominator, so there's actually three restrictions there. So the original problem, if I plugged in 2, that would make that denominator 0. When I do my keep change flip, when I flip that over, that introduces another restriction. You don't have to actually divide it or anything. You're just going to um, write down the restrictions for that question. Okay. Now, I don't... This is, I don't even know why this is a question. This is an Algebra 1 question, but this is on you guys' final, so you're welcome. You should get this right. Just cross multiply. This is little distributive property, x plus 6 times 6, and 2 times x minus 3. No quadratic, nothing like that. It's just going to be 6x plus 36 here, 2x minus 6. And then however you want to do it, I'm going to try to do two steps in one. Let me subtract 2x. And then in the same step, I'm going to subtract 36. <coughs> so I'm going to end up with 4x equals negative 40. So x is going to be negative, whoops, I forgot the negative, negative 10. Oh my gosh, I can't write. x equals negative 10. Now, just remember, it can't make the denominator 0, but we're good to go here. Anything that would make the denominator 0 would have been negative 6 or positive 3. I didn't get that as my answer, so we're good. This one is not an equation, so don't cross the denominators out. All right, x squared minus 64, difference of squares, x plus 8, x minus 8. What do I need to do to the first fraction to create a common denominator so I can actually add these? Perfect. Multiply. Now, don't cross the denominators out here because this is not an equation. All right? I'm going to operate on the numerator for one second. We're just going to do a little distributive property. So this is going to be 12x. Why my brain's not functioning? 12 times 8 is going to give you 96. All right. Now, my common denominator, x plus 8, x minus 8. Just go ahead and leave that in factored form. I'm going to add 5 over x plus 8, x minus 8 to this. 
Now, don't cross the denominators out. I do not have an equation. This is just an expression. So the denominator is going to stay that x plus 8, x minus 8. We're just, we're just adding these. So literally, all you're going to do on the top is combine like terms. So you got a 12x, negative 96 plus 5 would be negative 91. And that's it. That's your answer. Just don't cross the denominators out if you don't have an equation because you need the denominator as part of your answer. <clears throat> okay. Now, I've got one more that is a lovely equation. And I thought this one was a little bit extra tricky. So I just have this equal to 3. And I feel like the one thing that people mess up on this, I've got an x in one denominator, x plus 2 in another denominator. Sometimes people will just try to add 2 to the top and bottom of that first fraction. You can't add. You have to multiply. So I know this is annoying, but this is missing an x plus 2. And the fraction in the middle is missing another x. You have to put both of those. On this one, you would have x times x plus 2. You need both of those top and bottom to make all the denominators match. You can't just add something in. If you have a plain x, you need a plain x in all the denominators. If you have x plus 2, you need an x plus 2 in all the denominators. <clears throat> Once you have that to go, this is an equation. These denominators all have x and x plus 2, so then cross it on out. The top of this first one, I'm going to do negative 2 times x plus 2. So I'm going to get negative 2x minus 4. The one in the middle, we're going to distribute x. So I have plus 3x times x actually becomes 3x squared, and negative 4 times x would be minus 4x. And on this other side, I'm going to distribute the 3 and the x into the parentheses. So 3x times x is 3x squared, which is very nice for us because that's going to cancel the 3x squared on the other side. 3x times 2 would be plus 6x. So this guy here, this guy here, they're just going to cancel each other out. So we don't have a quadratic. I'm going to combine like terms on this left side. I got negative 2, negative 4. So I have negative 6x minus 4 equals 6x on the other side. Now, the 6x's don't cancel because if I actually try to move all the x's to one side, I would add 6x to this other side here. So I get negative 4 equals 12x. <coughs> Excuse me. And then don't write 3 as your answer. To get x alone here, I would have to divide by 12. So my answer is actually a fraction, which is totally fine. That's not going to cause the denominator to be 0 or anything like that. But my answer here would be negative 1 third. Negative 4 divided by 12, you can reduce. Both of those are divisible by 4. So negative 1 third. Does anybody have a question? Okay. Let's look. Now, all the rationals, we're going to do these graphs real quick. So each graph, one of the, there's four different situations you can run into. Sorry, I have this in color online, but the asymptotes are in here. And I'm just going to kind of sketch them. You can maybe see the line is a little bit darker. Just going through here real quick. Okay, so I just kind of highlighted the asymptotes. Now, the first part of the problem up here it just says the graph represents a translation of y equals 2 over x. Write the equation of the graph that's pictured, state the domain and range, and we want to do this in interval notation. Okay, so I have y equals, you would keep the 2 on the top because these branches, I know the asymptotes have moved the graph, but these branches are still in quadrants 1 and 3, which would be how it would be if we just had 2 over x. What am I doing to move left or right here? So if the original graph would have what the x and y axis would be the asymptote. So if I shift this, am I going left or right? How many? Three. Okay. Now, it's the opposite of what it looks like. You put that with the x. So it would be x plus 3. The reason that's an asymptote, if I plugged in negative 3 here, then we would end up dividing by 0. That's why there's an asymptote. So it's the opposite of what you think going left and right. Okay. 
how much am I shifting the graph up or down? Is it shifting up or down? Down by negative 1. Okay, up or down just goes outside the fraction, so this would be minus 1. Okay, now I know this is super annoying. So I had you guys just do the domain and range like all real numbers except something. I have to have you write it in interval notation because that's how the multiple choice is on the test. Okay, so domain. You go left and right forever, but you can't touch the negative 3. So the way we're going to write this, negative infinity to negative 3 with a parenthesis. And then, sorry, I didn't make this line long enough. Then you pick up on the other side here at negative 3 to positive infinity. You're just excluding the fact that I don't touch negative 3. I do that by using a parenthesis instead of a bracket. The range is going to be identical. It goes up and down forever, but it doesn't touch the negative 1. So it goes negative infinity to negative 1, and then it goes negative 1 to infinity. <coughs> We're just excluding the value it doesn't touch. Okay, now this graph has branches based on the asymptotes in quadrants two and four. So what would that, or would that change anything in the equation? If I'm graphing y equals two over x, would that change anything if the branches are in different quadrants? Exactly, okay. So this would be negative two on the top because we're moving the branches. It's, it's basically a reflection over the x-axis, if that's what you want to think about it. Now, um, looks like this one's going right to, so this would be x minus 2, and then up 3. So then you'd have plus 3 on the outside. So x equals 2, that's your asymptote there. y equals 3, that's your asymptote there. Now, in terms of my domain and range, super similar. You're going left and right forever, but you're not touching 2. So negative infinity to 2, union 2 to infinity. We're just excluding 2. <coughs> the branches for the range, we're going up and down forever, but we're not touching 3. So it would be negative infinity to 3, union 3 to positive infinity. I'm sorry, we have to, you don't have to write that out on the final. It'll be multiple choice. All right, now... These two graphs are inverse square function, so it's 2 over x squared. All right, now, if you have an x squared, the branches go the same direction. If it's positive, it's in quadrants 1 and 2, which is what you have here based on your asymptotes. The only thing that would be different here when you put the 2, you're just going to put parentheses around the bottom. So x equals negative 4, so I'm going 4 units to the left in the equation it would look like x plus 4 but you would just have to put a little squared on it to indicate the branches are going the same direction and then in terms of your y this is y equals 2 here so it would just be a plus 2 on the outside the y goes on the outside the x goes underneath with the x and the opposite of what it looks like <clears throat> okay now, domain identical to what we just did above. You go left and right forever, but you don't touch here in between the two branches. So negative infinity to negative 4, union negative 4 to positive infinity. The first one tells you left, the left forever. The second piece tells you right forever, and the negative 4 in between excludes that. The range is just going to have one interval here because you're not touching any part of this graph till you hop over that asymptote. So the lowest possible y value, I don't actually touch it, would be 2, and everything else goes above that. So it's just everything from over 2 up to infinity. And it's a parenthesis because you have an asymptote there, and it's not going to be um, a bracket. All right, now I know this is shifted, but based on the asymptotes here, the branches would be in quadrants 3 and 4. If it's flipped down, what that's going to do to the equation we should have a negative 2 on the top. That flips the branches down. And in terms of the bottom here, let's see. I'm going right 2, so this would be x minus 2. And then you just put little parentheses around that square to show the branches are going the same direction. Your y here looks like it's at negative 2, so I would have a negative 2 on the outside. And then domain, we're going left and right forever, but we don't touch 2. 
So negative infinity to 2, that would be the left side. Union 2 to infinity, that's the right side. Now this one, all the y values are pointed down. They're underneath the asymptote. So when you start your interval here, negative infinity. And then I would stop touching the graph when I got to negative 2. So there's no y values above negative 2. All right. <coughs> now, let me kind of zoom out on this real quick. Um, it just says for the graphs above, describe the transformation from the original function. All right. So if you look at this first one, this is going, let's see, left 3, down 1. That's all you have to put. Left 3, down 1. This one is going right to up three. Now, on that one, though, the branches are in different quadrants. The way you write that is reflection over the x-axis. So if your branches, if you've got a negative, I know, sorry, I'm just trying to get the graphs on the screen so you guys can see them. <clears throat> if the branches are in 1 and 3, that's a positive value on top. If they're in 2 and 4, that's a negative value on top. That's considered a reflection over the x-axis. So if you have a negative number on the top, then you're going to have that reflection as part of your description. Okay, now I think I can probably get 10 and 11 on the screen pretty decently so you can see these. So for 10, right, we're going to the, this is left 4, up 2. No reflection because both of the branches are going up. This guy is going right to down to, and then this one I have to include that reflection over the x-axis because your point, both of the branches are pointed down. Yes, it's worth 55 points, I'm pretty sure is what it says in the front. Make it a quick, that is your, <laughs>